uh, additions or functionality may not actually require uh, any type of demonstration or presentation, but I'll just uh, briefly cover them off verbally as, <coughs> as we go through. So uh, to get started here, um, I'm just going to switch my screen over so you can see my program in the FX, uh, Edge FX window, and we'll simply walk through uh, these features and functions within the software. So everybody should be able to see the EdgeFX uh, software up on their screen there now. And again, as we go through here, uh, I'll just simply be touching on the new features and functions within the software. <coughs> so uh, we've simply got um, the first one in the list there, uh, improved drawing tool buttons. Uh, that's a real simple one. What we've essentially done here is we've added in the capability when you're using a drawing tool to simply go through. If you pick a line, for instance, it's going to now have a memory of that line. So rather than uh, if you wanted to do a, a few consecutive uh, dash roadway lines, etc., cetera, um, you can simply draw a dash roadway line, manipulate it, and then continue drawing another dash roadway line without having to go reselect it again. So it's got a little bit of a memory in there. Uh, in some situations, it might just simply sh uh, save you a, a step or two as you go through. So as an example, if I go into a dashed roadway line, I can drop on a dashed roadway line, uh, hit Escape or my Select tool to now actually click on this and edit that line into a position that I want or need. And as you can tell up top here, my line is still set to the road uh, roadway dash, so if I now click on it, I can just simply continue drawing. So very simple uh, addition into the software there, just with a, some memory of the last line you drew. Uh, obviously, if you didn't want to draw a dash roadway line, you simply go to the drop down list and pick the line style that you need or want in that situation. So a very simple add on there. Um, one of the uh, biggest things that we've actually added into the software here now is Again, the capability, uh, which we've had a, a lot of requests for since we moved into EdgeFX, uh, was the right-click functionality. So obviously in FX3 and previous versions of our software that were not full 3D all the time, you were able to uh, right-click, you know, uh, just like a lot of other programs out there, pull up a menu option and uh, select the option from the right-click. When we rolled out EdgeFX, uh, that was one of the sacrifices that we uh, at the time felt we had to make was because navigation was now done with the right click uh, we weren't able to uh, essentially have that right click option in there to bring up menus well that's uh, our programmers have obviously worked and, and listened to one of the frustrations that many customers had and we're able to implement a uh, right click capability so any object or line that I bring onto the screen I now have the capability of right clicking on and basically the same list of options that would normally appear uh, on the left hand side if I click on the line drag this down there's all of our actions available on the left hand side again now I can simply right click on it gives me options cut copy paste uh, or cut copy and delete in this case um, and any other functionality I may have so any object that you have for instance if I brought a vehicle on here select it I can right click on it and it gives me all the options including automatically going in and drawing a motion path, etc. So any any options for an object, that particular object will now show up at the right click, which is a, a real nice feature. And obviously if I hold it down, I can still navigate my screen using that right click as well. But if I just simply click on an object, it pops up that window now. So again, uh, a nice functionality and feature that we've added back into the software, um, you know, that was uh, it initially deemed uh, you know, a little difficult for us to pull off, didn't think we could, and, and the guys obviously worked diligently to make sure that we got that back in there uh, to hopefully alleviate some of the frustrations, uh, 
you know, that some customers have had with that, losing that functionality. Um, new line snapping mode, so snapping drawing tools anywhere on a polyline. So again, we've added in now a functionality of if I draw a line, polyline, I can now click anywhere I want on that line. So again, this has been a, a feature that has been requested several times uh, where I can now click on the snap to line. If I click snap, that's simply going to allow me to snap to the end of the lines as the program uh, has always done. Snap to line now allows me to go in and I can actually add in, you can see the snap will snap anywhere on this line, attaching it to that line from any position. So rather than having it being, being forced, I guess, to either zoom in and try to get it close, we now can snap directly to any line or polyline from any position. So this can certainly be handy uh, if we're on the start a new scene. You know, uh, if you wanted to manually draw a parking lot or something like that where uh, before it used to be difficult, you'd have to try to just get it close and make it look good, uh, we can simply now, I can go turn on OrthoLock, for instance, and we can go in and draw a roadway line in here, or sorry, just a line, and now I can turn my snaps on and essentially snap anywhere off of that to draw lines any direction I want. In this case, I have my ortho locks turned on. And again, if I wanted to snap to the end of the line, I'll just turn my regular snaps back on, snap to the end of that line, and I can now do that. So again, a feature that's been asked for um, you know, several times, so we've added it uh, into the software to give you that functionality of snapping any line or polyline uh, at any given point throughout there. Uh, general functionality, um, actually this is another big one, with, uh, is users can now search for a particular object within a library, or within our object library. So you'll see now it, an additional button on the top here, the search functionality, allowing you to search for any object in the entire library. So obviously with the uh, ever-growing library, uh, object libraries that we have within here, it can certainly be difficult to uh, find certain objects in, in situations and you know uh, we try to pick the best location for an object uh, that makes sense however sometimes it just doesn't uh, you know you you might as a user think it should be in a different library and now you're struggling to find it so the search functionality is a really nice feature pops up I can now type in uh, the word fire in this case and it will now show any object in the library that, that are actually located in. So if I was looking for a fire hydrant, I've now found hi fire hydrant. I know it's in the landscape window. I can click on it. There's the fire hydrant. I can drag it on directly out of here now and pull it onto the screen. And obviously I'm in the top down view. Close that window out and you know there's our fire hydrant in our on our scene there now. It actually works uh, really well uh, also in the case of finding partials. So it will basically, when you start typing, it's automatically trying to find whatever letters you uh, put in there, uh, in that order, in any word whatsoever. So just to give you an idea, if I type in, um, you know, maybe I'm looking for a, a do not pass sign or something like that, or no left turn sign, as soon as I start typing no in, in fact, it's actually found, you know, uh, the word no in other words and objects in our library here as well. So we can scroll through that list and see. You know, if I didn't know exactly what it might be typed as, we can look for partials in here as well, which makes it uh, makes it quite nice as well. And we can drag that object in again directly out of there if we wanted to. So that was a, a functionality that uh, again has been requested, and uh, we wanted to make sure we got that one added in there. As the libraries keep getting bigger and bigger, uh, it can again be difficult to track down and find a particular object you may you may be looking for. Um, moving on, so that's kind of the general functionality improvement. Uh, you know, a few really nice features added into there. Probably the right click uh, and that search functionality in there uh, are probably the biggest ones. Sorry, I missed one on the list there. Title block uh, now automatically scales to the page. That's one I'm not going to necessarily show, uh, but it will now. If you change your page size or to landscape or portrait, the title block will essentially fill that page uh, as it should. 
So that was a, an issue uh, we had within the software, not changing with the paper size uh, and looking appropriate. It, it has now been addressed and is updated within the software there as well. So moving on to uh, actual uh, features and functions within certain uh, tools of the software. Uh, articulated vehicles slash smart trailer. We now have improved grips for manipulating articulated vehicles and added in a, an extra grip for the rear axle position on an articulated vehicle. So I'll just open this up here. We'll go to a new scene. And I'll create an articulated vehicle in here. So if I drag on a tractor trailer unit and click on the cab, hold down my shift key, click on the trailer. Now this, you can articulate any objects you want, truck and boat, um, whatever it may be. In, in this case here, I'm using a, a semi-truck and trailer. I can now create that articulated vehicle. And what it does is actually takes a snapshot and creates another object here, which is now an articulated vehicle. You can see I can grab that trailer and it basically is pivoting around the connection point at this point, which I haven't altered in any way and the cab of this truck. So over here on the left hand side there's now a button when I create an articulated vehicle edit configuration and it brings up some detailed grips here now uh, which weren't labeled appropriately before uh, made it a little more tricky to figure out exactly what they were doing uh, so again improving this functionality uh, trailer pivot so I can drag that back to the rear wheels center of the rear wheels if that's where I wanted it to be and again I can go into that the 3D view here and we can actually see where I have my pivot point set up there. Uh, I could come up top here now, attach point so I can move this trailer forward or backwards. And you can actually see here as well we have the coupling hitch point and we can now drag that and move that into position here as well. And I can actually see the fifth wheel in there as well which makes it makes it nice and I can adjust where my trailer connects in here using these grips and the truck pivot point here as well. So now that I've got the position set however I want or need, if I go back to the, I'll zoom out here, I'll turn off my edit configuration. So it's basically locked the configuration as I've set it. So now if I am rotating things, the trailer is rotating where I want it to be on there and again I can go into the side profile 3D view here and see the same thing. So if I were to add this to an animation path here now again with the right click functionality makes it nice and easy right click on it add a motion path and I can go in here now and So I've added in just a S curve. And if I hit play, I'm just going to slow it down here. Hopefully it's not too choppy. But if I hit play, we'll now see that that articulated trailer is following as I've set my pivot points, etc., and connection points within here. And that'll just loop through here as it goes through. Um, so I'll let it loop. Hopefully it's not too choppy as it's going through. But again, you can now see just easier functionality when working with articulated vehicles uh, within there. So moving on, uh, one of the next talking points uh, is into the point cloud functionality with the software. Uh, it's a new area for us, so most of the time when we have a release, you're likely going to see some improvements, uh, feature functionality, capability, uh, add-ons, etc. cetera, uh, with point clouds. Uh, basically with this one, we've added in the capability now with point clouds to actually download and accept data from Regal scanners. So Leica, Regal, Faro scanners are now uh, all downloadable uh, into our into our system to be able to be worked with. Uh, Regal scanners, if you haven't heard of them, they're um, I believe based out of 
the UK. Uh, we don't see them in North America all that much, uh, but currently uh, we do have several users overseas using the Regal scanners. Uh, the next point, measurements and imports. Um, again, not what I'm going to necessarily touch on uh, is the improved DXF import-export capabilities. So we've revamped uh, working with DXF. Uh, again, uh, within the software, built a new functionality within there. So if you're used to using DXF uh, and maybe had some challenges in the past, I would su suggest updating to 6.3 and uh, seeing if the enhancements have made a difference for you. Um, the next one, measurement log baseline can be created by, in place by clicking now on the screen. So I'll just start a new scene here. This kind of works with, it was kind of built for functionality within the point cloud, but now allows us to come in here and just start a new scene. And maybe what I'll do is I'll pull in a uh, satellite image here real quick. So I'm just going to click on the map image option. <clears throat> Find a location, I'll zoom in on it here. So if you're doing a manual measurement log um, and want to you know, maybe place it on an image like this, you certainly can. Uh, uh, that's kind of the functionality I'm going to show here. Um, otherwise, you can, um, you can essentially go in and um, within a point cloud, you can drop your baseline tool wherever you want. But yeah, functionality, basically in the old world, if I let me drop, drop this image in here. If I drop this image in as, as a Google image to work with, obviously it's to scale in here now. Um, in the old world, if I were to go add a measurement log, it's going to drop it right in at zero, zero. So the uh, challenge with that is sometimes I may have moved my image off to the side, and rather than dropping the baseline in the area I'm working, it would drop it at zero, zero, which might be off the screen, uh, and you might hit the button again and end up with several different measurement logs showing up on the bottom of the screen. So it was something that support uh, had dealt with on a few occasions. It was something that we felt was uh, uh, a fairly simple add-in is to give you the capability now of simply dropping that baseline tool wherever you need or want. So if I went to the measurement option here now and I want to add a measurement log into here, you basically now see this window pop up. Click anywhere on the scene to set the point of origin. Uh, so basically what that's getting at is where do I want to drop my baseline, where all my measurements are, measurements are taken from. So my point of origin, I'll hit OK. And I can now click on the screen, and I dropped it right there on the corner, and I'm just going to move this point code dashboard, which we're going to touch on here in a sec, out of the way. And we can now see right on the screen, I've dropped in right where I selected my point of origin, so that's where all my measurements are essentially going to be taken from uh, now. So that's the added in functionality of just simply one click dropping uh, your point of origin. I can obviously rotate it any direction I want. I can move it from here if I wanted to, but it gives you a starting point that's probably more relevant than zero, 00 uh, to work with. So instead of just dropping on and having you have to, having to move it somewhere else, um, it might save you one step by just simply allowing you to click and drop it where you want it to be in the first place. Um, so going through here, the next point on the list was actually added functionality and ease of use uh, when adding points in. So we've actually built this point code dashboard. Uh, this was actually built for, point, for the point, working with the point clouds and allowing you to use the uh, virtual total station uh, concept that we built into the software when working with uh, a point cloud, it actually uh, we realized it actually became useful for users uh, that aren't necessarily using point clouds but maybe want to manually drop in points and code them. So if you're manually typing in points, you can do that uh, and click within your screen to add the points in or manually drop them in. It's obviously depending on how you're doing it. So if I went down here, for instance, I can go up top here, and we have our point code library, which we've touched on in the past, where I can actually go in and put my codes in that I want to use, or that I use out in the field on the data collector, and have them match up within here so that if I were to come in here, I can go in and say, I want uh, solid yellow line, I believe is what that one is here, uh, and I can simply come into here now and down at the bottom of the screen so I can say, well, these first points I'm typing in are going to be, I want them coded as SYL, and it'll put the description here in just a second. So I can type in some 
some points here now. So point number one going on the screen there is a solid yellow line automatically put in there now with the proper code based on the point code dashboard that I've set. So I don't have to type this information in. We can use it out of a library and obviously save some key keystrokes and potentially save some errors in here as well. So I can just keep going through here. So you can see point number one right at the beginning of that solid yellow line. And we can now go in and I'll add in another point here. And you can see it's automatically actually drawing in a solid yellow line. I can turn that feature off if I want. I have it automatically drawing that in there to generate uh, and basically paint over top of my lines that I have in this case here. Um, obviously, I don't have to do this, but it can save you some time if you're manually typing in points. You can automatically be connecting with the line types and features that you want based on your point code uh, library within the software here. So minus 50 and 35, that should put me on the line. There we go. And I could continue adding in other ones, but I've automatically dropped in point number one, point number two, connected with a solid yellow line right on top of there. And my points are essentially matching up down the bottom of the screen. So again, that added functionality for manually typing in points or using that uh, point code dashboard and uh, using your point code library that you've set up in the software as well can save a lot of times if you're manually connecting points. Or in this case, we're doing it on top of a uh, salad image and maybe I want to turn that image off afterwards after I've dropped in all my points, taken my measurements, etc. Uh, we can do that by just turning off that image under the layer system. Uh, one thing that should have been covered off in the past as well is obviously uh, we have some objects on here that we may not want, vehicles, um, and obviously we can go in here if I right click on the image, I can edit the map mask and we can actually go in. And this has been covered in the past as well, but I'll just quickly touch on it where I can now trace around any object that I want to essentially cover up or mask, and it will essentially remove that. Uh, in this case here, it actually doesn't remove it. It just has created that mask. So again, um, if you had to go to court and somebody said, well, you've altered that image, uh, it's very easy to cover your, you know, CYA cover your butt by just simply clicking on here, and you can see turn off show image mask, and that car is right back on there. So it doesn't actually remove or edit the uh, vehicle out of there. It actually just puts a mask over top of it. So I can turn that mask back on and we've essentially covered that vehicle. And I could obviously trace my uh, roadway line right on top of here as well to fix that issue that with that crosswalk as I essentially erased part of that crosswalk now. And trace over top of anything I've erased. So that's that new, uh, let me just check here, make sure I've covered off everything in there. So uh, dropping the baseline on in any position, improve workflow for applying points uh, to the measurement log and uh, the one last thing is additional point cloud uh, rendering. Uh, so essentially when you're taking screenshots, etc., cetera, um, we've tweaked it to have a different default so that it now so that it now uh, it takes better quality images and isn't so um, drawing as much on the memory side of things. Uh, second last thing, specialized scene objects, uh, the avatar. Uh, so the human model within our software, we've improved on-screen responsiveness and uh, added in a functionality for field of view. So if I go back into the software here, I can drop, go to the object library, bring a person on the scene, and again, Going and working on a with a person in 3D is very useful. Placing objects in 3D is very useful. So I can click on the object, and basically, not a huge change, but some users were frustrated with how you know manipulated a body, and in certain situations, it could certainly uh, be a little bit tricky to get the so we get the position you wanted, etc. So basically just the functionality has just changed a little bit um, to work better with your mouse and allow you to manipulate a body in a certain position. Now these grips have always been here. Sometimes it is easier just to simply use the uh, grips to position it, but if you do grab and move an object around like this, it is much more responsive to your mouse than it was in the past. 
So to get a body in a certain position, obviously very, very simple using the grips within the software. So we now have a body laying on the screen, or on the scene there. And I can manipulate it again by clicking on any body part. Uh, added functionality for this is also a field of view. So, you know, if you had a field of view or a witness or something like that that said they saw everything happen and, you know, uh, on this scene here, maybe there is a, there's a tree over here I see, so I'll go put a, so we're working on top of this image here. I've just dragged and dropped on a, a big tree. So I don't know if that would be in the way for a crash or a wreck or something like that, but we've added in now the functionality to where you can actually give a field of view from a, uh, a person's perspective. So we've had that capability, field of view for headlights, etc. cetera. Uh, in this case here now, we can go in, and if I drop the person on here, I can move them to any position I want within my scene. And again, uh, if I right click or pull down the menu now, we can go in here into the very bottom of this, enable field of view, and it will now give a field of view from that. So if we have that body sitting here, this person standing here, there's a body over there, maybe a clipped by a vehicle or something like that, um, we can essentially try to show that, again, this is requested from end users to be able to show the field of view in here. And you can now go in and actually edit. I can show the options in here to change my field of view within here. So we can change parameters within here. And you can see my field of view is changing within here. So again, I can't see behind this tree, obviously, and it's now hitting that tree uh, within there as well. So again, a functionality that's been added in. We've had it in the software before, just not capable of being done uh, on the human model within there. So that has been built into there as well to give you that capability now. And the last functionality within here, um, under tools analysis and reports, we have the momentum FX. So the momentum tool within the software has had a couple of little tweaks. Uh, we've added in the option to enter a non-zero final velocity, um, which means obviously if you wanted to enter a final velocity where you want your calculation to stop, uh, before it would go down to zero. That was all you could do. You can now enter in a final velocity of where you want your calculation to stop, and it will take that into account. So if I go back in here, we can go in and I'll just quickly grab a couple of objects. move that body out of the way here. So if I set up a, <coughs> a quick crash in here, again I can right click, copy, and we can paste the vehicle into position. So we now have our vehicles at impact and final rest maybe. So making this up as we go through here, I can now go to my tools and analysis, add momentum, and it will drop this on. And it works exactly the same. It just now gives you that additional functionality to be able to go in and set your final velocity at something other than zero if you need uh, and obviously choose to within the software here. So we're now set up where our vehicles came from. 
And again, it's obviously calculating the math out on the left-hand side. And as you can tell here now, we have the capability of entering something other than a zero velocity. So maybe I want it to end at 15 miles per hour, and it will automatically take that into, into the calculation now when it's doing its uh, when it's doing its calculation. You'll also notice some improved grips on here as well, so better labeling of the grips uh, within here. And again, obviously the output within here, so I, I quickly made that up and I would obviously change other things, but for the purpose of the demonstration here, we can now see the report up there. And you see the final rest velocity at 15 miles per hour is in the equation there now rather than a zero velocity if you choose. So just double checking, that looks like about 30 minutes in. Um, we've kind of walked through all the functionality and, and feature changes within the next release, uh, which is at, uh, within the last release, sorry, Edge FX 6.3. Um, again, due to the uh, number of people in on the demonstration, if you have any questions, please email them uh, into us, uh, Geraldine's email. She will follow up, I'm sure, with an um, email to you guys. If anybody has any questions, feel free to shoot them our direction, and we can certainly get back to you with any questions in regards to the uh, new features or functions uh, within the software. Thanks again for joining us today and look forward to talking to you in the future.